talk about five mistakes to avoid when you're first opening your studio. Now, maybe you don't have an official home-based studio or anything like that. I think these are still gonna be pretty relevant to you. I remember about 10 years ago when I opened up my photography business, I really wanted some insight on what to invest if I was gonna open a studio, how would I get it, where do I purchase it, what do I really need, and so on. I was dying to have someone answer these questions for me. And so today, I wanna to be that person for you and give you all of the information you need in order to run a successful photography studio, whether it's out of your home or in a rented place or maybe in your client's house. starts getting colder like now in New York it's becoming more difficult to shoot outdoors because the weather is so unpredictable so a studio is a really great option as an alternative to keep shooting throughout the year without having to worry about the cold the heat or the Sun's direction okay are you ready let's dive in number one use the right lens if you are a portrait photographer, you most likely have a telephoto lens, and that's something that should be used only outdoors, unless your studio is like huge. But for the most part, we work in small spaces, and when you work in a small tight space, you need what's called a wide-angled lens. A wide-angled lens will capture from corner to corner of the room without you having to move away really, really far back. So use the right lens. The one that I have is the 24 to 105, and next week, in part two of this series, I will give you a whole list of the exact lights and equipment I use in my studio. Okay, number two, stop using the excuse that your studio or your space is too small. Practically every place can be used as a small studio setup, especially if you're only working with toddlers and newborns. This photo right here was taken in my dining room. Since we moved and I gave up my studio, I now shoot for clients either in my home, in theirs, or in rented spaces. I have a student that lives in a tiny Brooklyn apartment and she does beautiful work, all within a tiny kitchen. So yes, she does have a little bit more of a setup, but it's totally doable. Regarding posing, that's where it can get tricky. So investing in some small, cute little props for adults where they can always sit and so you don't have the whole length of the room will help tremendously. I'll link one of my favorite chairs that I use for all the dads, the tall people, so that can make it in the cozy family shot, even if I'm working in a small space. Number three, don't do this. Do not, I repeat, do not purchase too many props. When you get into the habit of hoarding props and collecting stuff, your place becomes cluttered really, really quickly. A good alternative is to maybe switch up with a different photographer every year so both of you have fresh stuff and it saves you money. What I started doing recently is putting away a budget at the beginning of the year for all the props that I'll find in Home Goods or Target or all these good stores throughout the year. And at the end of the year, I do a prop de stash. So I get rid of my stuff or trade it with a different photographer. Sometimes we don't realize how cluttered our place is just from the props that we don't even use anymore because they're old or they're out of style and so on. So don't keep your props too long. Also, the new modern is lifestyle images where you hardly use any props. So you don't even need props, even if you're going to do studio work. Number four, invest in the proper lighting. Okay, I can't stress this enough. I've had so many people come up to me complaining that their work is not good and blaming themselves for their portrait work because they don't know how to use their lights. And the truth is, is that somebody gave them bad advice on which lighting to buy and they have such a hard time with firing the flash every single time. And the strobes don't work correctly. And the modifiers are wrong. So instead of buying cheap stuff on a quick whim, invest wisely once and you won't regret it. You'll have lights that work properly and you won't have to worry about any of those things while you're shooting and you'll be able to focus on your clients. And number five, don't fill up your calendar with availability every single day of the week. What happens is, is that when you work every single day with a client, you shoot and then you edit and then you do some marketing for your business, your day gets split up in so many little tasks and it's hard for the brain to divide when we're doing what. 
What I found helpful is what I call batching. And so I'll typically shoot on two days of the week only, and I'll fill up my calendar with back-to-back -back appointments so that I have a full day of shooting and then a full day of editing and then a full day of marketing and so on. Everything flows a lot smoother when you're on the same task for a full day and your brain doesn't have to transition from task to task. Okay, so next week I will walk you through everything that I have in my studio, the equipment, the lights, the props, and so on, as well as links to where you can get them and so you can calculate approximately how much a good investment for studio will be. Sounds good? Okay, look out for it. Bye for now.